What's up everybody? I'm Erin Barra and I'm going to walk you through the breakdown of my performance of that song, The House Is On Fire. So before I get into any of the compositional or artistic kind of components of it, I'm going to walk you through the hardware and the software. So I've got a push two here, which I'm using to adjust parameters on certain devices, some launching, and then at about halfway through, I use it to send MIDI and um, perform via this analog synthesizer. This is a Minotaur by Moog, which I love. The Minotaur is then running in through this Moger Foger, actually it's a Mini Foger. Uh, so this is an analog overdrive pedal and that's going into one of the inputs on my Apogee Duet. I also have this microphone. This is an Audio-Technica 4050, which is one of my favorite mics I've ever owned, running into the other input on the Apogee as well. And then I've got this Launchpad Mini, which I'm using to launch scenes once I start playing push more as an instrument um, and to trigger certain clips. Over here in the DAW, I have the lead vocal. Um, this is one of my favorite plugins. This is a Waves Real ADT. Um, and it adds a huge amount of character. It's maybe not for every performance, but I'll talk more about why it works really well for this one. Um, and then you can see I've got uh, some gates, a lot of, you can see the slicing I did of certain elements here. Um, and I'll get a little bit more detailed about each and every single one of these tracks, but basically Ableton is the brain and I'm using pretty much every, um, all of the plugs are native except maybe two or three waves effects. And I'm using a convolution reverb from the Max for Live Essentials pack, which I, um, I use all of the time. It's one of the best sounding reverbs that I have. So, the song is about two people who are in a relationship that's falling apart. And it's the stage where you start by being in denial. So the first verse and chorus is, is really more of a denying the situation. And then verse two is more about um, being very angry about it. So it's those first two kind of grieving uh, or the, the way that you process emotions, those first two steps, and then maybe the rest is for another song. So when I was choosing the sonic palette that I wanted for this, I really thought about um, a metaphor that I that had kind of dawned on me um, about two people living on a living in a house that's on fire and just pretending like it's not on fire. Um, I was inspired by um, two people that I'm very close with and I, it, it maybe came to me a few years ago and I knew I wanted to write the song and I had the metaphor and then I had a gig. And so I had kind of a deadline to create this, which is sometimes what I need to do in order to make myself do anything in the first place. So I wrote and produced it simultaneously inside of the DAW, which is my workflow now. I, I compose inside of the DAW and Ableton having this nonlinear functionality really kind of allows me to collage my ideas together. So it was interesting because I was producing for, you know, I was, I was producing the musical components and the stage show and writing it all at the same time. So where I teach at Berkeley in the songwriting department, we, um, we really emphasize this idea of prosody, which is a word we probably made up, but uh, what it means is this connection between the things that you're trying to say or whatever it is you're communicating to another person with the musical tools that you choose to express that. So um, a very simple example of this would be Garth Brooks, I've Got Friends in Low Places. Um, it goes, I've got friends in low places. So on the word low, the melody goes low and they kind of mimic and support each other in that way. So that's a really simple example, um, but an, a harmonic prosody, an example of that would be Bonnie Raitt, I Can't Make You Love Me. Uh, it's a song about unrequited love, and the final chord of that piece is the flat seven major seven. And it's really unresolved, it's modal interchange, and it mimics that feeling of instability at the end. You know, you, you leave feeling unresolved. So armed with my knowledge of prosody, 
I then was able to pick a sonic palette, which was going to support the, um, the concepts that I was trying to communicate about um, relationships. So right away, I knew that I needed to start a fire, uh, theoretically. And so I, I chose to add in some vinyl distortion. So I've just got two different loops. These came from, I think, Batteries Library. And I blended them together, put a bunch of reverb on them, and, and it's, you know, all of a sudden there's a crackling fire, right? So beyond that, um, the next thing I did was add some breathing textures, which I thought really mimicked that idea of desperation, of like taking deep breaths and having to process something and then getting really upset about it. So I, um, I was really inspired by Holly Herndon at Loop 2015 uh, when she was talking about breathing into her laptop and how it's this like really intimate thing. And so I wanted to try something similar. So I have just the audio file of the breaths on the left side, and then I slice them in simpler. You can see here, I slice them. And then I've got these ones on the left and they're drenched. So it's got a lot of reverb and delay on the right side and it's dry on the left side, which is actually something I picked up from James Blake. A lot of times you hear his vocals, there'll be delay, but just on the left or just on the right. So I've got a nice stereo spread of the breathing and the, and the vinyl distortion. So already I'm saying something without really saying anything at all. Next is the breakbeat. I also sliced this in simpler, um, which in 9.5 became extremely powerful. And then in conjunction with the hardware, I was able to really quickly um, slice this. And actually this is the first thing that I did was slice the beat and I knew I wanted something that kind of had a lot of momentum and movement to it, but also felt unstable. So as I sliced it, uh, or as I programmed the slices rather, I, I create a sense of like rhythmic instability towards the end of the phrase and then it comes back around in the end. So I'll just launch this scene here. And you can hear the breaths on the left and the right, and then this rhythmic pattern, which feels a little off and then hits right back on the downbeat. So next we have the Microtron, which is a digital emulation of a Mellotron. And this is a choir Mellotron here. Just go in. So it's ominous and creepy. And I actually used a lot of clusters. So this is an EF and a G right next to each other. Three um, notes which are adjacent harmonically uh, to create this cluster. So there's a lot of tension that's already built into it. And then I used this LFO, this um, it's kind of like a modular piece, if you will, from the Max for Live Essentials pack, which is free. And it's the same pack where the convolution reverb is actually. Um, and I assigned the control signal to modulate the volume, um, which is doing something quite weird right now. There we go, it's a little bit more like it. Um, so in a way it was, I wanted to create sort of a side chain situation without side chaining because I I really love the, the feeling of pumping, um, but I, I find side chain compression to be kind of it's like almost a cliche now, right? So this was a way for me to use what I wanted, but um, do it a different way. And then I also set the rate so it's, it's not synced to the BPM. So again, creating even more instability. Then next is the external instrument, which I need to unmute here. This is the analog synth. And then as, as we go forward, the song goes on but for the most part it's just playing a D the entire time so the harmonic component of this keeps moving but I have the D holding it down so I find this to be really interesting because um, a, har a pedal point if the if the tonic is holding um, holding everything down at the bottom while you switch the harmonies around it really gives this sense of like wanting to move someplace but then not being able to move 
And then that keeps going until the very last chorus when I reharmonize it and it really opens up and the effect is is big. And that's supposed to be the moment where, you know, the protagonist gets extremely angry and the song continues on. So I'm using external instrument to do that. And then I'm also just recording audio straight from the Minotaur in as well. So when you pick up these files, which you can do on Blend, um, you'll also have the audio version of this as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the piece and that you picked up some cool tricks by watching this breakdown.